Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2 where we see Virtus Pro taking on Poseidon and this is uh, a very interesting game because we see three people of former Virtus Pro on the side of Poseidon. Well, of course, the new Virtus Pro is playing on the attack of Virtus Pro. So which one is better, new or old? We're gonna find out soon. And of course, with me is my co-caster Kanaz. Welcome back. Good to be back. So new or old? New or old? It's hard to say. For you? Um. For me, I mean, I feel like every game I've watched of the new VP, they've looked real sloppy. And Poseidon have looked real good. So I would be betting on Poseidon if it were me placing my rares. <laughs> it's Poseidon so far. I mean, they're on top of the Star Ladder rankings, right? I mean, they have dropped one game, I believe. They're 4-1. to one. They're, just, uh, they're just doing really well in the season so far. We're gonna see if they can do that also up against uh, against Virtus Pro. If Illidan Stormrage can draft against uh, Goblack, of course, that's one of the one of the well, more interesting things to see. Previous draft from Goblack, maybe not that strong. Of course, we saw them previews on uh, up against Power Rangers. We're gonna see. We have a very color themed band scenario here, by the way. All dark blue, apart from the Nyx Assassin now. But Io band out in the first round together with the Razor, uh, Baton, and also the Visage, making Bat Rider the first pickup. Naga Siren there with uh, OD for Virtus Pro, though strong combination, and the Keeper of Life for Poseidon with a Nyx Assassin that can counter both of these heroes, banned out together with the Lich. Yeah, um, nothing incredibly surprising thus far, except for maybe the Razor Ban. Uh, VP look like they're content to just play against the Bat Rider, so they let it through. And with the Razor Ban, you kind of expect OD is going to be the response. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much Razor's a counter to OD, sort of. So that's what they're going with. Ban it out, pick up the OD immediately, and take the Naga probably as a support. Uh, so I I like VP's draft thus far. It's very clear what they're doing, I think, with what they were banning. But, you know, just ban out the heroes that are going to be good against what you want to do. And they decide on thinking about their uh, next ban. I mean... Naga Siren by Virtus Pro, we've seen Goblack running that one as uh, more than just a support, so it's really unclear to see what Virtus Pro going for. And on top of that, we don't really know if OD is going mid or not, because we know that OD actually sometimes also gets run in the uh, hard hard lane, or sorry, uh, safe lane as uh, as a hard carry that is. Uh, Weaver gets removed from the pool, removing a dual core possibility, perhaps for Virtus Pro. We still have, however, Alchemist and Lifestealer on uh, on the sides, and Poseidon, by the way, haven't of course picked up any of their cores just yet in terms of carry cores. Yeah, they have the Batrider who will probably be playing at least a little bit of a farming core role early on in the game, but as it goes on, ne definitely not really a carry, more of like an initiator at the end of the game, a ganker sort of in the mid. So mm -hmm. they're going to have to start picking up something here, and uh, we'll see exactly what it is they want to go for because they have a lot of options right now. They could even go for something like Phantom Lancer if they really wanted to, to pair up with the Keeper of the Light. I would be not too excited for that one, but it is definitely a possibility. Uh, we still have a gyrocopter in the pool though, and that's of course something that Ilden really likes to play. And one of the things that we know, like if the carry is the drafter, and we've seen it a couple of times when, uh, when uh, actually a couple of times Black actually drafted for mouse sports when they were uh, having some people on holiday and stuff. And he liked to draft the anti-mage for himself. I wonder if it's the same here for Illidan, like he just wants to draft the gyrocopter for himself as uh, the Phantom Lancer indeed got removed. Lifesaver picked up by Virtus Pro. And Poseidon will go for the secondary support, picking up the Bane now, of course, to counter that life sealer and have him in a fiend grip in case he tries to go for someone. Yeah, I guess that's a question in general on uh, drafting. If you just go for, if the captain will often pick heroes that he really likes for his role. Uh, I mean, in general, you want to pick heroes that are good, but also that your players like playing. If they're having fun, they're playing heroes they like. They tend to, you know, play better. So we'll see exactly what they're going to go for if he picks up something like Gyrocopter just because that's a hero he likes to play, or if he ends up picking maybe something that works with his team particularly well. Gyrocopter isn't particularly synergist with Keeper of the Light, so maybe they'll see something else coming up from here. Yeah, we're kind of once again uh, maybe lacking a little bit of stun on Poseidon. Uh, we have got, of course, Nightmare, which is great, also with the Keeper of the Light. But uh, they don't really have anything that they can actually attack through apart from the lasso. Which, of course, Virtus Pro does have because they've got a Naga Siren with the uh, Ensnare, which is pretty strong as well. And it has a way lower cooldown than Bat Rider's uh, lasso, of course. We have got, um, again, I mean, Virtus Pro, they take a long time to think about their, their draft here. And 
I don't know. Maybe Goblock has a... Uh, I don't know. It's a bit of a mental breakdown. No, not that. But he is taking a long, longer time than I would expect from him anyways. Yeah, he's spending a lot of time thinking about these picks. Uh, it's going to kind of pressure him a little bit more going into the end of the draft, but we're kind of approaching the end. This is a pretty important pick. And they're going to go with Disruptor, actually. Poseidon immediately with a Doombringer. Yep. No... No doubt about that. Doom, of course, very good up against OD, and in terms of shutting down the OD during a fight is, is very good. However, there is uh, right now a bit of a different issue right now that First Pro can throw out. This is actually a bit more old versus Pro style, having an S Disruptor, of course, with Naga Siren support there as well. But of course, the combination that you can get is this song. You get yourself a Kinetic Field Static Storm combination, and Team Fight is yours. You drop yourself a Sanity's Eclipse on there. Everybody dies. Yeah, I mean, Sandy's Eclipse is always a very, very powerful spell to run with. If they want to uh, grab Puck and go with the Dream Corp, they certainly could. Uh, looking for what it's going to be, though, for this last pick. I, I think they're probably just looking for something traditional for the offlane. But they could do. They could just grab some sort of mid and run that way. Like a safe lane solo OD yeah. and an aggressive tri lane. It's certainly possible. Definitely, we've seen them like old first pro. We've seen old first pro running with this as an aggressive trail line before, and they go for an Aegis Prophet, so that's a very conventional mid still. And that is, of course, still uh, also a hero that uh, well, that is actually normally picked up a lot earlier than this one, than this uh, like fifth pick, Aegis Prophet. Yeah, it's uh, not a hero that we often see going to like ninth pick in the total drafts. You know, they get it right then. That's what they wanted to go with. We're going to see another Shadow Fiend, though. This time for Poseidon. So, once again, against VP. Um, Shadow Fiend's okay against OD. So, if they end up in the mid lane matchup, it's not terrible. They may also send Doom into the mid lane, who is also kind of just okay against OD. Either one can really sort of just lane against them. They're not intelligence here, so they don't lose their damage. It's really hard to last hit a Shadow Fiend, though, against an OD. That's kind of the big problem. Yeah, we'll see if he can actually get some. Like he has some support. He has if if the bane hangs around there in the first couple of minutes, that will be such a big impact on the mid lane for Shadow Fiend. Well, the Shadow Fiend's also on the radiant side, so once again he has the option of just kind of moving into the jungle really early on. Once he gets a couple points into Shadow Rays and just trying to get some souls that way. We're waiting for everybody to pick up their heroes before we're gonna jump ourselves into this uh, powerhouse match. Poseidon, not really, uh, like, a lot of people I think that still, like, you, you say the name, team name Poseidon and they don't really know what to expect, but then you say the player's name is like, oh, those. But I think that definitely this is a team to watch out for. I'm hoping for them that, actually, Poseidon is a sponsor for them, right? Um, I think so, but I'm not really sure. I believe it's a, their sponsor. I hope for them it is. Never yeah, I mean, I hope it's a sponsor. I haven't heard of the sponsor Poseidon specifically, but everything about it seems like it's been an actual sponsor and not just the name they came up with. Yeah, hopefully they give them some uh, proper support, because it's definitely a strong team, as we have been seeing over the last couple of days. Of course, you're watching Star Series. This is uh, Season 7 of Star Ladder, and we are watching Day Number 6. This is the third game of three. We had uh, three games today, or we have three games today. And last one, of course, best for last, I'd say. Virch Pro up against Poseidon. Poseidon on the Radiant side for this matchup as we see a tree hunt being chased down. It is a witch hunt for this little sad Stumpy who's trying to probably just either scout out or maybe, yeah, just scout out and be annoying, I guess. It is uh, Ilden or Airman Stormrage, uh, or 8-10, or uh, sorry, 8 to 10 uh, playing the Doom for this matchup. We have got Sakura, who is apparently a Swedish stand-in. And it's actually Sakura who's standing in for Elite right now. He's playing the Keeper of the Light. We've got Jotum or Medved playing the Bane. In the mid lane, we'll see Tamer Wild, or otherwise known as Crazy. I like how everybody's like known for like different names and multiple names. But uh, it is Crazy on the Shadow Fiend, and it will be KSI or Xe, uh, on the Bat Rider. Yep, and for Virtus Pro on the Dire side, we're going to have G in the mid lane, taking up the Outworld Devourer. Looks like NS is hanging out to at least to start things off on the Disruptor. Uh, in their safe lane, we're going to have Goblock taking up the support Naga Siren. Farming will be Resolution on the Life Stealer. And finally, their off lane will be Light of Heaven, but he's currently heading just up to the jungle, and he's playing the Nature's Prophet. 
Yeah, in the meantime, we have a dry lane in the mid. I mean, I said they may want to give Timo a little bit of assistance in the start of the game. Uh, yeah, they have some assistance. We have the Bane hanging around and Feeble up on G. That's definitely very strong. But because uh, Verge Pro apparently were aware that this was going to happen, they've also put themselves Disruptor in the mid. So this is uh, a duo lane versus duo lane. I like it. Oh, uh, and of course, for people watching on Twitch, apologies for the inconvenience of the lag that you might be experiencing. Please send a report to Twitch using the wrench. It is uh, on their end, uh, as uh, confirmed. And... Um, Hopefully we can fix it, but I can't really try to fix it right now. And I won't really want to waste my time talking about it much longer. So we're just going to have to deal with it and move on. Yep. Uh, sometimes these issues happen. It's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, so I'm looking at the lanes and I'm thinking that Poseidon have a pretty strong lineup for this particular game. They're, both teams are kind of mirroring each other right now with their offlaner jungling, the safe dual lane, and then the uh, dual lanes fighting in the mid lane, which is kind of surprising. Disruptor heads towards the top lane now since he can't... He's really not as effective in that dual lane mid as a Bane really can be, just because Enfeeble is such a powerful spell, and Thunderstrike from Disruptor is kind of a whatever type spell. Like, oh no, I took a little bit of damage. <laughs> Uh, and you can only so do that for a little while, because it's actually pretty expensive. Yeah. Well, and Feeble, you can just spam it out a couple of times. And so far, so good, I'd say. I mean, Team of Wild, he's really getting there in terms of getting those souls up. And once he has enough, Bane will say, you know what, you can do it by yourself. You've grown up, spread your wings. Uh, although, maybe they want to try and go for first blood. I'm not sure if they can, actually. Yeah, it's going to be kind of hard for him to get first blood here, especially with no mana at all up on Shadow Fiend. Yeah, he's even just going to go for the Enfeeble, which is really the better plan. They have, with Enfeeble at level 1, he doesn't really want to grab bean, uh, grab Brain Sap at level 2, unless he needs to. Uh, he'd probably rather get Nightmare, so he's going to hang on to the skill point and see what the situation really calls for, and they don't have the damage to kill G. And they'll just uh, have Team about left alone in the middle soon, we'll see. 7 for 2 right now for G, while the Shadow Fiend is sitting on 10 to 4, so... Tamer Wild having 12 souls, no mana of course, I mean he still gets Astro Imprisonment, and... I guess and soon not anymore, because actually G, if he's a little bit more unlucky with the next two spells that he casts, he might not have any mana left to go for the Astrals, but... We'll see, we have got Free Farming Doom on the bottom lane, 23 for 8, up against the Free Farming Life Seeder on the top lane, 22 to 4. What do you think about that matchup in terms of carries? Well, it's, uh, I think Doom is going to have the advantage if it just becomes a one-on-one, -on -one, no matter what, just because Doom is so good against one carry. Uh, uh, Doom just such a powerful spell. So really, when it comes sort of in the mid-game, if he keeps getting the Doom off on Life Stealer, it's going to really limit his effect on the game. And then when it goes really late game and they have a lot of damage that kill makes fast, he could start using on other heroes to just take them out of the fight, whether it's the Nature's Prophet, the OD, or maybe even the support. Who knows? Perhaps in these... I, I like... I think, for now, Resolution better. Yeah, I, never mind. I stopped liking Resolution. And a Midas, indeed for him. And he has a complete as well, so that means that he's going to be a little bit more boring than the Doom is going to be. Doom, of course, he does have his Devour, and that's going to be helping him get some extra solid farm. As we see once again, Jotham... I, I'm still waiting for a rotation to come to try and go for first blood. Like, who is going to die first here? It is supposed to be someone on the middle lane, right? Would well, that. that's yeah. That's where all the action is. So if it's somewhere else, it's going to be a while until we see a really big rotation coming out. Because supports have to walk across the entire map to try and set up one of those ganks, uh, whereas they can only go halfway and get to the mid lane. You kind of think that uh, Shadow Fiend's the more vulnerable one to the game, just because G does have a disable in the form of Astral Imprisonment, but he's gotten really unlucky with his uh, Essence Aura procs and hasn't really restored any of his mana. I guess Shadow Fiend should be kind of ganked, but then you've got yourself a Naga Siren Disruptor that kind of don't really gank that well. As in, they don't, they're not really a roaming ganking support combination that you often see. You've got, you mean, there, there's a brilliant combination in there. You can glimpse inside Kinetic Field, and there can be a snare as well, so there's kind of like, there's some nice shutdowns. But I'm not sure if it's actually enough before supports come in to try and help out. Of course, Bane has been hanging around that mid lane for quite some time. We did have a smoke picked up by the Bear Rider, though. Bear Rider, who might be uh, looking for 
the first first blood or the only first blood I guess once he has a blink dagger because he hasn't bought boots at all he is just stacking and pulling and perhaps he just wants to have his blink dagger before anything else like just a complete blank inventory with only a blink dagger and then try to go for a kill yeah, it's once you get these blink daggers up on heroes like Batrider, Puck often as well, you can move around and get those kills very easily. So we'll see if he is able to uh, move around, get the big kill on someone important. It's going to be hard to get life stealer sort of, because I don't know if they have the damage to really burst him down just during the lasso. But uh, if they can get a kill on him, it's very important since he did go that hand of Midas build. And a Midas MVP. We're gonna see though, mid lane so far. 28 for 12, Tim Wallet. 22 for 5 on OD. So very even. Another hand of Midas picked up. That's two hand of Midas is up on Verge Pro. I guess the one on H Prophet was more expected than the one on uh, on the Life Stealer. And by the way, Life Stealer was able to take down the tier 1 tower. And also already has uh, been able to do something to the tier 2 already. I mean, he's just not being countered at all. So why not? It's free, free damage being done to towers right now, and free gold for the entire team. Of course, boosted supports of Verge Pro a little bit more on the map as well than the supports of Poseidon. And if we're talking about First Bloods, supports are going to be very important, although that support didn't really get the settler link all that right. Or the kinetic field, that is, sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to land kinetic field without anything sort of to set up. G can use uh, Astro Imprisonment for as the setup, and then they can try and go for the kill, but it's still somewhat difficult. We finally have someone harassing in the oh, bottom lane. He might actually die here. Um, if he has one more Riptide, then he will die. That's first blood, Godlike. And he just was able, he was at least able to buy a Blink Dagger, but oh my god, that was a support. Naga Siren killing off a solo Bed Rider. Of course he didn't have boots, and Naga Siren did have boots. That kind of helps. In the meantime, Tame Wild has a lot of trouble as well. Locked inside a Kinetic Field still with the setup that you mentioned. Doesn't have any mana and will probably drop. There we go. And that's going to be a kill for NS. That's going to be two kills for two supports on the side of Virtus Pro. Yeah, so they're able to get two, two kills. Uh, Naga was helped a little bit in the bottom lane by the Nature's Prophet ultimate. Went through, bounced across the entire map and then hit Barrier, so was able to do quite a bit of additional damage there. But yeah, not having boots, it really hurts you, and you usually don't get the boots early on in Batrider because you want to get that Blink Dagger as quickly as possible. But it's kind of just demonstrating how when you have a Blink Dagger and nothing else, you're really easy to kill. Yeah, he has a Blink Dagger and nothing else. He's gonna look for a target. He smoked himself up for that extra movement speed. Perhaps he can take down G if he shows himself again on the on the middle lane. For now, G, though, is uh, rotating bottom because he's gonna try to help kill off the Doom. Doom has been able to Doom Godlike, though. Godlike will get picked off there by the Doom. Maybe the Knight as Storm Prismid will hold him safe for a little while as, indeed, Doom himself goes down and Godlike will get the Knight by his teammates. There we go. Naga Siren the Knight, Doom dead, and that's gonna be putting Virtus Pro even further up on the map. I mean, it might look for, to be a 1-3, to three, but it's actually th still 3-0. to zero. Yeah, and it's resolution was even there, so he got he just got assist gold, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he got assist gold for that kill, and now he's just gonna port back up to the top lane with the creep wave all the way back by his tower, farm it up some more. Resolution's getting very large this game, and it's not like last game where they kind of lost mid against the Shadow Fiend, and he was really big, and then they had an anti mage free farming while Shadow Fiend was being a nuisance. In this game, they're winning in pretty much every lane in terms of farm, and when that's happening, it's very easy to start winning a lot of fights very early on. Yeah, we have a nice board by Verge Pro in the in the Radiant Jungle, and they already scouted out KSI having his Blink Dagger, so they won't be surprised by that anymore. Which is, of course, one of the bigger things of that first gank that you could do with the Blink Dagger. The element of surprise, but he's not able to get it anymore, and it might actually be working against him, because if he still thinks that it's unknown that he has that, then it might be turning out to be uh, fairly bad as Goblin goes here for maybe the Courier. In comes it is there, up on the Courier, that can happen. He tries to get himself hasted out, he will get Micro away. Goblin is in trouble though, Light of Heaven also taking a lot of damage, Doom. Uh, Illidan, is he actually going too far for this? The song gets popped, so Goblin will end up getting out alive together with Light of Heaven. And that's an important song used, it's 180 seconds, it's the last two is being used in the mid lane, that's gonna be G dead, that's the last two that they wanted to have. And that's gonna be boosted. Yeah, uh, so things are... That's a good kill for them to be able to get uh, taking down G in the mid lane. Did he use... No, he didn't use Fiend's Grip for it. He just hit level 6 after the kill. So they're going to have the Fiend's Grip as well to uh, try and set up another gank with this Bane. Really unfortunate for Doom. He almost got two kills there. 
if he had been able to get the one kill down just before uh, the song went off on the Naga, I think he would have been able to get Light of Heaven pretty easily there as well. So they able they are able to escape, but they use the level one song. That's three minute cooldown. So it's going to be a while before they have the opportunity again. Yeah, in the meantime, Doom is farming up fairly nice. I mean, with Phase and uh, and also Drums, he can already be participating in fights very uh, actively. So far, I mean, he's looked for the fights himself, which might not be that exciting because, I mean, he is fighting up against uh, more targets than, than one. He is just normally the one. So it's not really all been um, been going all too well, but he is doing okay. I mean, Illidan is actually highest on net worth for his team. Still Shadow Fiend, uh, quite a little bit behind there, what, almost 1k behind the uh, the Doom. And it's Life Seater, of course, still that it's on top because of his Hannah Midas, so no surprise there. But still, Doom, I am kind of... Uh, Interested to see how he is going to try to keep up with the uh, life seeder, and of course, one of those things is how he's going to try to continue to keep the pressure on. Yeah, life is still farming very well. He's 1300 ahead in terms of net worth, and that's quite a bit at 11 minutes uh, into the game. He's almost got his armor to finish now. Resolution's just doing particularly well, and he's on a hero like Lifestealer that can get involved very early, even with the Hand of Midas. You don't really need a ton of items, and oh. it looks like Medved's dead. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing there. He puts himself in a nightmare, but I don't think it really matters with the rage there from Resolution. One more hit, it will be Light of Heaven that picks up the Bane. In the meantime, Naga Siren goes down on the bottom lane. Doom not being used for that one. Last two being used for that one, though, with the Blink Dagger, of course, helping out. So support for support in the end. And a tier 1 tower to drop here on the bottom lane if uh, Poseidon has its way, which it looks like they will. Fortification will try to delay it with actually, we have a Disruptor TPing it as well. And this tower should still be picked up, perhaps an S can get a pro denying. Yep, there we go, go black. Has an snare ready for the Doom inside the kinetic field, pops a, pops a Doom up on an S. Let's see if we can make something happen, he can't continue to chase though, he has to save his own life. And he runs for it. Means that a 110 second cooldown is uh, kind of wasted because Ns will not die from that doom and even if he did there will be a deny and they are actually able to maybe try and chase him down. There's four people first pro on this bottom lane. Yeah, I'm surprised Resolution ported in particular. I think he might have wanted to just stay farming but there are a lot of heroes top. Maybe he felt it was just better to go with his team towards the bottom lane and he can transition into a tower push. Maybe just a trade. They're probably feeling pretty confident about their late game. I think that VP do have a very powerful late game team. Uh, with Naga's support is good as the game goes on. Obviously, OD and Lifestealer are both pretty powerful in that 30, 40 minute on mark. And OD, we've seen in the super late game, be pretty difficult to deal with. Yeah, and OD is... Uh, I mean, even though he has not had the easiest of starts, he is still doing pretty well. He's building towards that mech mechanism. He only needs about 700 gold before he has that. As uh, they exchange towers, tier 1 bottom for tier 1 mid. A good pickup for Poseidon, actually. That's a very big strategical point, of course, for Verge Pro to take down while they're tier 1 bottom. I mean, okay, it does leave their jungle to be a little bit more bare, but they weren't really using it that much anyway. We have a smoker for Verge Pro, though, and they look to try and make something happen here. Yeah, they're moving around with this smoke. I don't know who they're necessarily hoping to find. Maybe just anyone in the jungle would have been fine. But uh, there's no one there. Everyone from Poseidon is currently up in that top lane. They've been up here for quite some time. I don't... It seems like they want to counter gank, but now they're moving forward, so they must be committing to the tower finally. Yeah, they will be finding a fight, though, if Verge Pro has its way. They are a bit slow to uh, everybody come towards the top lane. G is uh, the slowest. G who is... Uh... Not yet there for Steam. We already have three of Verge Pro here though, and Life Sealer actually uh, with them as well, which is of course a big impact. They have Blink Blast 2 up on Goblack, the one that can song, the one that can stop this hell from going on. We do have the song though, the moment that the last two was over, and there was not enough Focus Fire to kill off Goblack. That also means that the Doom was wasted, and Ness will live through this. And I mean, the tier 1 tower does go down, but I mean, they lose a tier 2 for it on the bottom lane. Nature's Prophet, Light of Heaven, able to split push that down. Yeah, they end up getting behind in terms of the tower trade. They do force out the song once again, which is not the worst thing in the world, but they're not getting anything else out of it, and now they're having to make their way across the map to try and find farm elsewhere, heal up, etc. And that's really not the situation you want to be in. They need to get something else out of it. They can't be affording to trade down on towers. No, and I mean, they, they have got a solid late game-ish. 
but it's not necessarily a win up against the lineup of Verge Pro. Nor do they have that one big team fight that can say, you know what, if we get this one big team fight ready, like properly done at one point, we are gonna win the game, or we're gonna at least win a massive team fight that's gonna put us so far ahead that it's basically unthrowable. They don't have that. So they just can't drop too far behind right now, and so far they've been rotating a lot, and as you say, they're just not getting that much extra out of it. And they they keep losing ground. I mean, towers are even, it's 3-3, three to three, but the split push potential from a Nature's Prophet when there is a lane that is no longer protected by a tier 2 tower is just insane. You have to be so careful with that. Yeah, it's... They, you have to be, you're right, very careful. Nature's Prophet can just take towers, take lanes while you're moving around trying to take those fights like top. And if they get all caught by a song and Nature's Prophet just is able to push that bottom lane again, you can take a tier 3 and it's snap of fingers. So far, by the way, this this KSI, I mean, after he got us a very fast blink dagger, he's not been able to farm that much. But I guess it's mostly due to him roaming around so much, but he is uh, dropping off a little bit. I mean, we're going to be expecting maybe KSI to be the one to, you know, delay the game more, get some ganks going, but he can't really do it right now. And it's uh, it's starting to be maybe an issue. We have a BKB being built by Tamer Wild, almost there, just needs 400 gold for the recipe. We've got Resolution that already has got one Minthra Hammer for the start of his... Desolator, which we're gonna assume that he's gonna get. And so far, Verge Pro, I mean, they've got the Shadow Blade up on, up on uh, Nature's Prophet as well. They look pretty good here in their uh, in their core items, while everybody off Poseidon is actually still starting, or still continuing on with uh, getting their items up. And we actually have Illidan, who is supposed to be the carry of Poseidon. He picked himself up a Ghost Scepter. Yeah, that's... Pretty surprising. I mean, I guess he's super worried about getting hit by this uh, life stealer, and that's definitely a thing to be worried about. Doom has low armor, high HP, and that's pretty much the worst thing possible against a life stealer, as he does do more damage based on their current health yeah. and does it all in physical. So picking up that Ghost Scepter will help him for standing in the middle of the fight and not getting just focused down by resolution, but. They don't really have anyone else who's a good target to try and force resolution onto. Oh, I mean, it does slow him down a little bit, though. I mean, I, I understand the necessity for the ghost after it just slows him, slows him down. Puts more pressure on the Shadow Fiend in terms of damage, but also he went for defensive items, of course. He has a BKB right now. He needs to be able to just continue hitting stuff. I mean, needs to be able to cast his Wrecking of Souls in uninterrupted without the fear of getting a static storm on top of his head, etc. As we have got first pro perhaps right now. But I'd say also by Keeper of the Light, because I mean that was just a little bit overextending. And that's gonna be the rest of uh, Poseidon backing off as well. And just walking around the wrong corner there and I mean Verge Pro they've got some wards up on in the Poseidon's jungle so they know exactly what would be coming for them. Yeah, they're just getting picked off repeatedly, and that's not really what you want to be doing. VP are moving around once again, trying to find anywhere they can to apply pressure. It's probably going to be this tier 1 in the mid lane. We see some pings going on it, and a lot of heroes there. But while this is going on, Light of Heaven's going to push up that top lane and try and get the tier 2 there as well. So uh, the pressure, once again, coming from all sides from VP, and Poseidon are still not really responding to it in the way that they need to. And they're still grouping up a lot as well. I mean, that's that's the other thing. If they were spending their time farming, like while thinking about how to counter this, I'm fine. But they're actually spending their time moving around while doing this. Of course, we still have Tim Wild getting some farm up. We also have Illidan still getting some farm up, but not as much as they would be if they would actually dedicate their time to farming. As for example, on the top lane, nobody here to defend, nobody here to take the farm that's actually incoming, and that that's kind of hurting them. And it's gonna hurt them more later on, of course, as well as. Uh, Resolution is definitely still farming. We actually, so so far, considering it's uh, Russians versus Russians, it is only 9 kills in 20 minutes. Yeah, and uh, last game was only like 19 kills by the end, and I think like 5 of them took place as the game was ending. Uh, and that was Russians versus Belarusians, so... Yeah. It's pretty close. Yeah, CIS Dota has gotten so patient and practiced, I guess, lately. Ooh. Not really just the uh, constant team fight mid that we would see a year ago. I'm not sure if I'm happy about that. It's definitely not as fun, but it's still... It can still be enjoyable in some way. 
Definitely could. We have Roshan be taken down by Verge Pro, by the way. Life still able to pick up the ages, of course. I mean, he has his Desolate already. I would almost say, like, Verge Pro, why wait? Why not just go? Because they have the power. They've got the split push, of course. They're not in any rush because of they have the, they have the split push. I mean, they don't really have to end the game right now. But taking out the outer towers will definitely uh, make sure that first pro is not going to be, or that the Poseidon is not going to be a threat anymore. Just shut their farm down completely. It's already being reduced a lot, but shut it down completely and make sure you just starve Poseidon to death. Yeah, they could definitely start just pouring the pressure on now. That Desolator pickup is going to be huge on Life Stealer. They have that additional minus armor. They already do quite a bit of physical damage. The Riptide gives minus armor as well from Go Black. They're going to be hitting really hard, and there aren't a lot of heroes that are going to be survivable enough to do anything right now on the side of Poseidon. Apart from walking around in groups, apparently. Yeah, that's been their plan pretty much all game, yeah. but <laughs> you can't think that they're going to continue doing okay, and the farm is going to start going well the way of VP, unless they uh, start farming a little bit more efficiently on the side of Poseidon. I mean, farming efficiently is uh, very far off their game right now. And they're actually smoked up, gonna see if there is gonna be maybe someone trying to gank up on the Doom and trying to counter that. But we see the minimap and we see where Virge Pro is. And Virge Pro is in the other jungle. So, so far, there will not be anybody on the top lane apart from perhaps a Nature's Prophet that's gonna be sad enough to walk into that trap. Although he'll get helped by uh, by an S. Perhaps they can hold them off long enough to, to do something, but actually everybody of Virtual TP's in, and it looks like also Poseidon just backs off again while farming a bit of the dire jungle. I mean, why not, since they're here. Yeah, but they're still just kind of sitting in a pile on top of each other. I, they need to either commit to the pushes or commit to farming. They can't, like, waver back and forth between the two. And as it stands right now, I think VP are going to start building up a pretty big advantage, and I would say they already have a pretty big one. Yeah, I'd say the same. I mean, we already see five. I mean, to be fair, it's 5k gold in favor of Virtus Pro. It's not that much for 22 minutes into the game. Like, if, like, the way I find that they are ahead right now in terms of control of this game, I mean, they're determining who, where, what's happening. And they're only 5k ahead. And that's all, of course, in the hands of Shadowfiend, who still is able to do uh, something nice there. He's, he's sitting on 3200 gold. But, but you're right, it just feels like they're so far ahead in terms of, uh, of control of this game. Experience graph also really not that much because, of course, lack of kills. We only have 3k in favor of Verge Pro. But it looks like they are done waiting. They still, of course, have got the Aegis for a little while longer, I believe. Yeah, they do. And uh, they will want to use it. So they're trying to take down all, at least all the other towers. Tier 2 tower top will end up dropping. There's no fortification. And maybe Tier 2 mid next. And maybe then try, maybe, if the, if the Aegis is still there, maybe try give a go for high ground, but for now, towers and control. Yeah, you're right, The uh, when you were talking about the gold advantage being on VP side, but not that big. And that's really due to the way Poseidon is playing. They're not getting picked off, they're not giving up things quickly, but they are giving things up pretty much constantly. So it's just this like slow bleed that's going the way of VP, and yeah. they're just gaining the way of control. Poseidon aren't losing fast, but they're definitely still losing, and they're going to have to start to make something happen here. There's a big item that can come up in the near future from Shadowfiend. He's sitting at 4,000 gold, but... Is he going to be know, able to do it by know. himself, though? I mean, there will be a basher, so if he's going to get bashed, he can't hit, can't do anything. Yeah, he needs to get a butterfly, almost certainly. I got to imagine that's the item he's going for. He can go for big damage as well if he wants to, but Butterfly is just so effective against Lifestealer that I can't imagine another pickup here. And that will make him a lot better at fighting against this Lifestealer, but he can still take a lot of damage and go down very quickly, and even if he survives, the rest of his team isn't really doing a lot of anything right now. Yeah, one of the differences also, if there is indeed a big team fight, it is 24 minutes into this game, and this Keeper of the Light which is a support that normally gets quite a bit of farm because of, you know, the Illuminates, etc. But she doesn't have a BKB just yet, or BKB, a Mechanism! She is still 500 gold off the Mechanism, and of course the Mechanism has been up for a while on the side of Verge Pro, who now take the last outer tower on the side of Poseidon. Nice deny! Nice deny! Question is how much it will make a difference for us from Prism it holds in, turns on his BKB, he will want to try and cast something, but gets bashed to death! Buys back! 
That's what he saved his gold for Resolution still taking a lot of damage. In comes the song to allow for Resolution to come back up after having his Aegis there. Static Storm, Kinetic Field, three heroes in there. KSI already picked off Sprout up on two. Illidan stuck together with Jotun who gets a Fiend's Grip on Light of Heaven and is actually able to get the kill in the end. Down also goes the... Disruptor, that's a double kill for Tame My Wild. Looking for more. Looking for the next one. Looking for resolution. Last one was there. That's gonna be another kill. It is this time Illidan that gets it. And that is gonna be three dead on the side of Virtus Pro. After, of course, having two buybacks used by Poseidon. It did come at a price. But I think it is a worthy one. It shows that Poseidon still has some fighting spirit in them. Still has some plans for this game. Still, of course, has some spirit as Goblike will be picked up here. Probably Illuminate will definitely do the most of the damage there and Batrider will pick up the kill and the creep wave followed them So that means a tier to tower getting picked off here f In favor of Poseidon and I have to say I was not expecting Virtus Pro to not be able to make that one Go that way. It was way. so yeah, it was a really unfortunate fight The trees kept coming out from light of heaven and grabbing quite a few heroes and that's all well and good But resolution can't hit anyone while they're stuck in trees, so it just kind of gave them time to get cooldowns up repeatedly because Light of Heaven doesn't actually do any damage really right now. At least not enough to be relevant by comparison to what Resolution's dishing out. It was just Resolution getting kind of kited and couldn't get in range to hit people, and then they survived. The buybacks were able to bring them back in, and they were able to do the damage, push them back. So it's a very good fight by Poseidon. Well fought. They did cost them, you're right, with the buybacks, but. They still took the fight and they took the tower in the mid lane as well. A pretty big win for them and we see the gold graph is still in favor of Poseidon but this is definitely uh, something that Poseidon needed. They have hereby created space for themselves to get more farm. We have a 4 staff up by KSI. We have Shadow Fiend starting to buy items now that he knows that he can't buy back anyway for another 5 minutes. And it was definitely something that was uh, that was needed. Virtus Pro, however, I mean, they still were able to take all the outer towers out. And a lot will come down again to the next Roshan, of course. Who gets the Aegis? We still have two and a half minutes before we have the next Aegis up. Or the next Roshan up, I should say. And maybe next Aegis up as well. But uh, time will tell. Time will tell indeed. And Virtus Pro will probably try to take it. And Virtus Pro has got a better lineup, I think, also for taking down the Angels. Of course, Poseidon has got the Necromastery to get the minus armor there. But with the song threatening that Aegis, it should always go to Virtus Pro, I think, if played properly. Yeah, I, VP still have the advantage, especially if they go for this big Roshan fight in the next couple of minutes. But it's hard when you give up a fight that big kind of uh, they were all the way on the other side of the map which is fortunate if they if that had been a fight on their side of the map that they lose that way they end up losing tier three fortunately it was like a buyback fight so they probably never lose that hard on their side of the map but uh it slows down their momentum quite a bit and they had a lot of momentum so mm -hmm. kind of just losing that is pretty rough at this stage of the game something that might help them uh, get it back we have a lot of heaven with the side of ice so Light of Heaven, of course, the one that is uh, split push. Or at least should be split pushing for first pro. He's now taking down Ancients. But, I mean, he still has got now three lanes that have no tier 2 tower standing. And he is going to be having the time of his life if he gets some freedom there. We have the bottom lane already pushing out. And we have everybody off Poseidon on the top lane. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him teleporting there. Although he right now is just a bit greedy for Ancients. But other than that, otherwise he might have been able to lay down some harassment up on the tier 3 there. Which he might steal, I mean... So far, Poseidon not really uh, making a move just yet. Actually, there we go. Shadow Fiend TPing back. And that's going to be the end of that... Well, whatever that was that uh, Poseidon just did, to be fair. They just went into the Dire Jungle with all five of them. And decided they couldn't do anything with it and went back. Yeah, Light of Heaven couldn't really port down there. He had the cooldown on Summon Treants. And he's not really going to be able to push that effectively without them. It's kind of just very risky. And he had already summoned the Treants for the Ancients. Because it's wasn't really his team creating pressure, so there's nothing stopping from Poseidon just from porting people back immediately to stop him. So it makes sense that he didn't really go for that, even if he had the opportunity because it took Poseidon a little bit longer yeah. than they were expecting. We've got the man style already up on Shadow Fiend. 2600 gold also to boot. I mean, he is doing well on the farm, and to be fair, considering this is indeed a life sealer that has got a hand of Midas, he's able to keep up quite decently. I mean, Shadow Fiend is only about one and a half K behind, which is pretty good. 
Considering he died once more than the life stealer and he doesn't have a hand of Midas. And he didn't yeah, didn't have a hand of Midas. I already said that. Wow. I want to say the same thing double. Yeah, it's simply just because Shadow Fiend is better at farming than Life Stealer. He has AoEs and Life Stealer just kinda has to be a melee hero that walks up and right clicks everything if he wants to get killed. Since I'm not gonna count Infest really for its farming potential. Uh, so yeah, it's good still that resolution is ahead. And the Midas definitely is what is creating that situation. Also, his uh, hero level being pretty far ahead, even though he's spent some time with his team recently, and Tamar has been moving around a lot, kind of just being the only one really farming on his team. And the one that's really still uh, needing that level 11 is an S. He is still level 9, close to level 10, but he's the only one that doesn't have his level 2 ulti. And his two, level 2 ulti is actually pretty important, or at least, well, you know, the duration is the same, but the extra damage that it brings, if landed properly, which so far it, I have to say it has been. It's uh, it's pretty decent. I, I, I like it. If he actually gets himself level 11. So far he's the lowest level on the map. Imagine him getting hit on by indeed the Shadow Fiend who is level 17. Well that's gonna be a very short-lived disruptor. He doesn't have a force staff, doesn't have a ghost scepter to get himself away from the Shadow Fiend hatred. So we'll see if he manages to stay alive in a fight. I guess that's one of the more uh, of the qualities that support actually has to have. Just Stay away from the carries of enemy team. Still, we have got Roshan attempted. I say attempted by Shadow or by uh, <laughs> by Reapy. But with attempted, I just mean taken down. Because with the Desolator up on the life center, it's just a very quick one. And in comes a song. Oh, look at this. People to pick off. Are right, Virtue Pro actually going to fight? I don't know what else is up the high ground. So they're going to let it go. They took the ages. They got what they came for. And they back off into the safety of their high ground. Yeah, they throw out the song to prevent them from contesting Roshan as well as maybe thinking about attempting a fight if the layout looks good. It didn't look particularly good, so they just back off, content to take Roshan. That's the right call for VP here. Now they can group up. Uh, they might want to wait for the song before they go for a team fight, and they definitely have the time before, obviously, Aegis gets reclaimed six minutes from now. <laughs> and then maybe just back up the mid lane, probably going to be their best target. They have all the tier twos down already. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really change that much from the playstyle that they've been playing so far. Just group up, not fight, you know? That's Binkai and their style. Perhaps Virtus Pro is going to change their playstyle, though, although last time they did, last time they went in, they kind of had to pay for it. They lost the Aegis, and then they lost three on top of that one, and they ended up losing also a tier two, and it just wasn't a fight that they were able to take. So perhaps also they are not going to fight for a little while longer until they know for a fact that they are going to be able to take it. Perhaps waiting for OD to have his side of the vice, which will, will be actually in quite some time, because he's not farming that fast, and he still needs his Mystic Staff, for example, so... That's going to be taking a while indeed. We have got, by the way, Naga Siren sitting on 2200 gold. I'm kind of curious to see what Goblek wants to go for on that one. He already has got drums. He already has to have the Abyssal up on resolution, which is also pretty nice. And, I mean, still... Nature's Prophet sitting on 3600 gold. Still split pushing a little bit on the top lane at the moment. But um, not really trying to show himself on any of the lanes. Because he knows that if he's by himself, he has the possibility to get picked off. But both teams in the same situation. Want to farm more. Want to not fight. Yeah, because the game is so close still that uh, yeah. you don't really want to just force the issue. You don't know that you're way ahead. And they can't know that simply because no one is way ahead. There's a pretty substantial gold lead on VP, but it's 35 minutes in, so 8.5, 9k gold, it's not as big a deal as it would have been at like 20 minutes in. Are you still there? Yeah. And, oh, <laughs> you're still... <laughs> you said end, it's like, okay, there's still something coming with another game, well. But you, you're, you're absolutely right. Why would you fight if you don't know for a fact that you're gonna win it? It's basically that simple. First Pro trying to at least make sure that Poseidon is not farming. That's something that they can do, at least. Forcing Poseidon to sit in their base, ready, waiting in case something does come. And just, you know, First Pro can still farm the Radiant Jungle while they just... Make sure that Poseidon doesn't get anything out of that. They farm the Radiant Jungle, they farm the Dire, dire Jungle with Light of Heaven, they farm the lanes. They're just having uh, they're just having a good time farming. And that kind of ma makes for a very passive game at this moment. Virtus Pro, old versus new Virtus Pro. Having a bit of a stalemate, if you will. 
Yeah, uh, it favors Virtus Pro though pretty heavily because they do have the Nietzsche's Prophet on their side and he's able to just farm up in the dire jungle completely alone while the rest of the, his team is constantly putting pressure on lanes and taking advantage of the rain jungle. So VP are coming out ahead every minute that this is able to come on or continue and we can see that in the golden experience graphs as they're just sloping further and further in the favor of Dire. Yeah, boots of travel for Illidan, by the way. What do you think of those? I mean, I think they're concerned about the split pushing potential that can come out here from VP, and they want to have someone who's available to do it. Doom is probably one of their better options. I don't think Shadowfiend can ever really afford to back off from wherever they are. Uh, without them just completely probably losing the fight as soon as he leaves. Doom, he can like toss out a Doom if he wants and then back off to try and stop the split pushing from Nature's Prophet. But it's going to get kind of hard, and with the Scythe up, and now he's getting damage on uh, Light of Heaven, I don't know if Doom can really just completely say he's going to defend against him anymore. Well, Doom does uh, create an extra inventory slot with that, of course. With uh, Boots of Travel, creates it for uh, a Soot Grass, which we're going to assume that he's going to get. So he is the Aura person, and this one already has drums and blasts. But a bit of the same as we saw earlier today. But yeah, he's not turning into one of those hard carries. It's all relying on Tamer Wild and, um, well, Bed Rider to get a good lasso off, basically, because that's really needed. If they don't get that, then it's game over. But Tamer Wild, if he gets Abyssal, the damage source of Poseidon is locked down. They don't have anything next to him. Yeah, it's really rough if Tamar I'll just gets picked off at the beginning of the fight. He doesn't actually have buyback right now, which is uh, somewhat dangerous. He wanted to finish the butterfly, which is fair. Butterfly is a very big pickup when you're worried about Nakes and OD and uh, Nature's Prophet killing you. They're all just focusing on right-click damage, so being able to evade's a big deal. But if they get, if he gets picked off at the beginning of a fight now, he doesn't have buyback, and that's probably just game over. This is really, by the way, this is this is really starvation Dota right here. Poseidon hasn't left their base for quite some time. Top lane pushed in by a light of heaven, mid lane pushed in by Naga Siren and Illusions and Resolution just coming around there as well. And bottom lane continuously pushing out, pushed out by the rest and there's just no way for Poseidon to get a hand in something and they, they're just stuck. I'm kind of starting to get frustrated by it because when is something gonna happen? And I think actually right now, Virtus Pro are in a very good position. They don't have any reason to make it happen. But do you really want to be making this all that much later if you're Poseidon at this point? What are you? What is Poseidon gaining by waiting? I don't. I don't know what Poseidon's hope is. Maybe they just want buyback on Shadowfing and then they'll try to make something happen. He's pretty close to it, but they're sort of losing like a thousand gold per minute right now to VP. Just every minute that goes by while this is con continuing. VP are building an advantage of 1,000 gold. And that's a lot of gold to be giving up. And these items are starting to come out faster and faster from VP. They really aren't getting a ton up on their heroes. BKB is in the future for Batrider, but he's not particularly close. Keeper Light and Bane aren't really getting anything. It's it's going to be tough. they got to make something happen here, I think, in the near future. Or they can't allow themselves to just be starved out. That's not the way you want to go down. No. And, I mean, a smoke, perhaps a smoke gank. I mean, if we look at the map for them right now, I mean, it's uh, it's 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 saved a little bit because they just warded and counter warded up on the high ground. But they were fighting completely on a blind map for a long time. They were sitting in their own base without having any vision up on any high ground, without having any extra wards up on the map. And just completely in the dark, waiting, like sitting ducks, waiting for a hunter to show up and kill them off. It's, it's sad, and it's... I don't know. No, oh, it's frustrating, I said. But let's see if they can actually make something happen right now, because they're sitting with five people on the bottom lane. We already have Virtus Pro also on the move, or at least a couple are showing their faces on the bottom lane as well. At least they're ready to defend should something happen. We have got the heart about ready up on the lifesaver. What am I saying? The heart is actually... well, it's actually 20 gold away from being ready. The courier is already sitting there. So, actually, yeah. Let's see if something happens. If they can force something out. Glimpse back, turns on his BKB, last super resolution, look at that damage, resolution, Fiend script as well, gets taken down! Tamer Wild's BKB doing work, we still have Doom sitting in the middle of all of this. 
But um, the resolution did end up buying back. Wants to go in again. Nice kinetic field again. Locks in three. In comes the Senatis Eclipse. Wrecking of Souls. Team of Wild now getting abyssaled and getting killed off. Nature's Prophet with a kill. Keeper of Light will go down as well. And now the rest of Poseidon, they're on the run. They're on the run indeed. Medved trying to run, but I don't think he'll be able to make it as G. Or can he? KSI. See, he makes it happen. He buys time for the... Disruptor to uh, back off. What am I saying? Disruptor for no. the bane. And G actually goes down. It is, in the end, a fight that I would actually call even. I'm not sure if I'm happy about that, but it's still definitely impressive for Poseidon to take down resolutions as fast as they did. Um, I don't think it's even. VP had to buy back on the life yeah. stealer. He had the gold. So, yeah, but he, he died, so it was a 3 for 2 fight in favor of Poseidon anyways, and then they had the buyback as well that they had to use, and he almost died again, which is somewhat problematic. They lost the OD and a bunch of gold on the uh, life stealer as well, so it's not the best fight in the world, and he also doesn't have his heart done now. He had to use his uh, heart gold to get that True. buyback. He's still not super far off, only like a thousand gold. It's... It's probably going to lead to a little bit more passivity, though, once again. <laughs> uh, we have like 30 seconds left till Roshan's back up. I wonder maybe if maybe Poseidon is able to get it. I mean, there's still a, a song soon then again. I mean, 20 seconds until it's back up again. By the way, this Naga Siren Goblack is trying to turn into maybe a little bit more of a semi-carry here. Picked up a Diffusal Blade. It can definitely be very dangerous later on in the game. And of course, as well, in terms of split push. Yeah, and having the purge is also just so powerful. Uh, as a not only a slow, but to remove ghost scepters, mm -hmm. uh, can be very good on these heroes. Looking so at eleven for that one indeed. Who now has his old grass after previous fight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Poseidon, I think that fight helps really get them more into it. Maybe they'll feel a little more confident to try and make something happen. But the Peter are still just kind of accumulating gold, and they still need to deal with it. Here comes Roshan. They're not close enough to really do anything yet. And they're not they're gonna, gonna have to hurry. Enough. The smoke is up, but I mean, by this time, they're just too late. Or they had the timing wrong or something. It is uh, the know. life stealer with the Aegis right now. Again. So that's still gonna be his heart delayed a little bit more, as in he has to wait for it to be gone. Maybe he's gonna sell his Midas, though. That might be a possibility. If he still wants to have the heart when he has it, when he has the gold for it. But yeah, you're right, I mean, British Pro are still farming quite a lot. I mean, we did have a bit of a dent in the, like, a little bit of, if you look at the gold graph, there's a little bit of a dent in the gold graph where the previous fight happened. Experience graph shows it a little bit more clear, where British Pro basically got stopped in their, uh, well, in the, in the graph dive, basically. But it's starting to go towards British Pro again, because they still have the superior map control. Yeah, it's a pretty good example of how map control really influences the game. VP have just been able to hold the map on lar in huge, huge portion of it for so long now that Poseidon really are falling further and further behind. They started to make something happen, and uh, it worked out pretty okay for them in that top bottom lane with the fight, but it looks like VP aren't really willing to wait it out anymore. They have the Aegis, they have all their spells, except for Wrath of Nature, which is sort of minor in the grand scheme of things. Let's see if they can put some damage on this tier 3. Yeah, the TP's already went, uh, ooh, careful Shadow Fiend. Already went towards uh, the base. Team of Wild's gonna get Limbs back, but won't be uh, getting caught out there. Tower already down to half HP though. Naga Siren Illusions, no joke, especially not with a Vitality Booster now up in Goblex inventory as well. Definitely makes those Illusions. Actually, it doesn't make the Illusions a, a tanky at all, does it? No strength. Just stat gain. Um, so they well work for mirror images as well? Just the Vitality game? Booster? Yeah. No, right? You still have you still have the health. Okay. You don't... Oh. You, yeah. <laughs> Open Wounds got dodged Manta style. You used to get out of that. British Pro. Can they actually make this happen? Can they catch out Tamar well? That's gonna be the main thing. Can they abyssal him and then take him down in time? Can Resolution get in range? Yeah, it's kind of hard. They don't have as good of an initiation plan as really Poseidon do, where Batrider is sort of an obvious form of initiation, and even Blink Dagger and Doom can sort of try and initiate. Versus Pro, they're forced to just kind of walk up to them. Resolution just stands at the front of the fight and sort of charges. And he's taking a lot of damage here. I'm waiting for the moment where KSIRXE says, you know what? 
I'm gonna blink in and grab you. I mean, you see him sitting, he is he is hiding. He wants to go for that right opportunity where he can find himself a kill. And there is a four staff also up on the Keeper of the Light. So he might even use his four staff blink and then get four staffed out by the Keeper of the Light. Or even double force back if he catches out resolution. That would be a big one. We might see that happening right now if he wants to. Resolution. Still in there, taking up the tower, in comes the last two, it's on Goblack, they don't want to deal with the song, that's the one they want to get rid of, there's already an Abyssal Blade pop though, and that's going to be a song to still get themselves out, Goblack, still inside that, Master Imprisonment, in comes Xe, no more mana up on him, and that's going to be everybody of First Pro backing out, the song, doing it again, boo. Yeah, uh... So they're going to be able to disengage clean, they get the tier 3 down as well. Not able to really lay any damage on the barracks, and of course if you don't get them down they regen up anyways. But uh, that's kind of rough for them, they still have the Aegis, maybe they'll let Goblock heal up, get him back in the fight, and then try and force it again. They have a few minutes left before the Aegis gets reclaimed, and I imagine they really want to get a set of racks down before it goes away. Well, they have to hurry for that one to happen. Ro I mean, two minutes before the Aegis is gone. They are gonna have another song up by that time. They also have the lanes, of course, pushed out, courtesy of Light of Heaven. Light of Heaven, who, by the way, I mean, he is, he's been farming continuously. He also has an MKP, he has a Manta style. He has got quite a stacked inventory and is actually right now highest on top of the net worth chain. He's extra got, he's got 5k gold extra gold in his inventory, and I think this is starting to be a nature's profit that Poseidon has to be really worried about. They don't really have an equivalent towards to a nature's profit at the moment, like they have Shadow Fiend, which you can like carry-wise compared to Shadow Fiend, but Doom definitely is not as stacked as Light of Heaven is by far. Yeah, uh, nature's profit is a pretty strong hero, who knew? <laughs> because he's able to just sit there and farm and farm and farm while your team is keeping pressure and then he can get involved in this team fight. Like, what we're seeing, maybe bottom. Yeah, Doom is already up on the Astral Imprisonment target. It's an S. They will be able to pick him off. That's at least one dominating Doom all of a sudden. Open wounds up on Tamer Wild. And there also is the stun and snare as well. He does cast his Requiem though. But nobody actually dies apart from the ages. In comes the song. Tamer Wild still alive. Wants to go for Goblack. His BKB is running out though. Still getting songed. Are they gonna continue going here? They really want to. KSI doesn't have a last two anymore. And KSI will get picked up by Resolution. Resolution though. He can't live through the power of Tamer Wild. Shadow Fiend. Buyback for the Keeper of Light. In the meantime, Light of Heaven. Hello. Pushing on the top lane. Gets himself a melee rack. That's gonna be worth it. Even if he ends up dying here. Because he can definitely buy back very easy. And he will do so. But that's no problem for him at all. That's gonna be a fight that was... And the fight itself was taken by Poseidon. But I'm gonna say like that's gonna be worth it for Virch Pro To finally get a rack down. Yep, they get a rack down. And it's not even the one that they had already uh, taken the tier 3 down. So they have a set of exposed racks. And one melee racks down. So it is an advantage for them on the map, but they did lose that fight pretty handily. I don't really uh, give up. And VP just struggling in these team fights still. There's a lot of good team fight spells that can come out from Poseidon. They have the disengage on the side of VP with that song, but it's just not really doing as much as they need it to right now. It is not, and especially not with the BKB. However, the BKB of Shadowfiend is now down to 7 seconds. I mean, the 8 second BKB definitely helped. Take my while to do a little bit extra during the song, but it's uh, it's it's starting to be uh, starting to be a little second. But it's still, it's gonna be a disengage, and it is still almost off cooldown again. Can Poseidon actually start? Because because they, they can't wait around anymore, right? They have to try and take fights themselves right now. Because if they wait around, they're gonna get split pushed, and that's not gonna be in their favor. So they have to try and take matters into their own hand, and try to force out fights, which apparently, which they just just, just did. I mean, it works. They can yeah, actually it, get themselves some kills going. They can get the fight going and going their, their way. Yeah, and uh, Timo now has the Satanic up as well in the Shadow Fiend. He's very far on the Shadow Fiend. Uh, so he could do quite a bit of damage. He's pretty much dead even with the uh, Nature's Prophet in terms of farm. So both of those heroes are kind of the two big farmers at the moment, but Shadow Fiend's a little bit better at carrying just because he's an agility hero and Nature's Prophet's an intelligence hero. Nature's Prophet. Crystallis in his inventory. 1700 gold. I mean, at the moment he doesn't have buyback, but by the time those four minutes are over, I'm gonna assume Light of Heaven is gonna be uh, 
very rich again. That should be uh, should be definitely there. I mean, he might at some point even stay, sell a shadow blade to get even more items up in there. If he wants to, depending on what his team still needs. I mean, they don't really have an Assault Grass yet, have they? Which is something that you at some point would want to have, especially if you're up against a Shadow Fiend, of course, who makes Life Stealer's life uh, pretty tough with uh, with that minus armor. Yeah, it's definitely not really what you want to happen. Uh, minus armor is very effective against Life Stealer. Maybe he's the one who needs to pick up the AC at some point, yeah. but. He's in a position where he's running out of item slots pretty quickly. He went for the heart just to get a lot of HP. It also gives him some damage, but AC potentially was a better choice. Just because it gives him so much armor, and that's really the struggle he's having right now, is the Shadow Fiend hits really hard and really fast, and he needs some more armor to help mitigate it. Perhaps he just needs uh, the cells, ha his, his armlet, or get himself some boots of travel or something like that, and get himself some items that way. Talking about heart, I think Goblack wants that as well. Goblack is at 2100 gold, and this is this is pretty interesting because I mean the game is going on for 51 minutes right now. Still, I want to say 15 more minutes, but 27 kills for Russian versus Russian team is not something that we see every day. But Goblack has got this possibility to turn into uh, into quite an important hero. He's only 6k behind the net worth of the OD at this point. OD who goes for the sentence eclipse kills off the Bear Rider with that one. Bed Rider. Whoa, Bane gets picked off on the other side of the map by Nature's Prophet. We are gonna have Sue Ilden in a lot of trouble, gets killed off as well. And now we are gonna see maybe Keeper of Light drop as well. This is the third kill for First Pro. Fourth actually with the Bane taken out as well at the back uh, back end, who by the way dropped a gem, but nobody cares about that one. Virtus Pro just getting a fight going their way and forcing out a buyback for the Doom. Can they actually take the game off this? Uh, their buybacks on any of those other dead heroes? No. So, they potentially can. Shadow Fiend's big, but I don't think he wants to fight all five heroes. <laughs> Almost all of their important spells are up. The Abyssal is going to be up on resolution. They have the Doom, yeah. they went for Light of Heaven. Yeah. But the Ghost Scepter doesn't save you anymore. The Diffusal Blade from Goblock just once again being so big, and now with Shadow Fiend caught. Yeah, and Shadow Fiend is the only one left alive. Doom already bought back earlier. Still able to kill of Light of Heaven, but now he gets Abyssal. Turns on his BKB, he's gonna go for it! He's gonna try to fight them! Five on one! Wrecking of Souls is still there as well, he pops his man's stuff and now he tries to get away, but he is blocked in! And he can't man fight! Resolution, resolution! Goes for KSI after the Shadow Fiend dies, Shadow Fiend does still buy back, the Rex are still in some trouble though! And Shadow Fiend might be able to make that change. He goes for resolution. Guess Astral again. Fiend's grip up on G. Is there damage though? No. In comes the song. Goblack making sure that everybody gets backed out. Virtus Pro, they do not take the game off the back of that fight. But they do take themselves a Rex. And maybe even on the bottom lane. Yeah, the Rex go down there as well. Because the lane was pushing in. And that is no more melee Rex standing on the side of Poseidon. And even the ranged Rex on the top lane will get picked up. Because the creep wave coming in is enormous. So I mean, yeah, that's, uh, you asked if they could win the f t game on the back of that fight. Looks like they could. Uh, Shadowfeet did a little bit better in that fight than I was expecting. Yeah. And mostly that's because they uh, used the Abyssal, I think, too early on him. Uh, they grouped up on top of him, but you have to wait until he uses the Satanic, I think, and then you Abyssal him to try and kill that duration. He got the full heal off of the Satanic, and that really helped him stay in the fight. Get the kill on Nature's Prophet. Which slowed down their push. If Nature's Prophet survives there, all the racks go down. Yeah, Verge Pro, I think they feel pretty confident right now. All of a sudden, the gold grab drops versus 25k. By the way, the gold grab was 20k in favor of Verge Pro by that time. Experience grab, of course, also. Steep line down, in comes the open wounds, but four staff into safety will be there. Doesn't force out a man to stop just that glimpse back though. Inside the kinetic field turns on his BKB but gets a vessel straight away. In comes the lasso up in resolution who's getting taken down real fast. There's no way they can hold him in right now. They will be popping the Aegis and that's gonna be a song. By in time for resolution to get back on and with no more BKB up on Tamer Wild it could end very easily. They go for the Doom first. Doom gets bashed and gets killed off. Double four staff might save him. Nope, OD. With the orb damage, able to take him down. Now for Tamer Wild, tries to cast Wrecking of Souls, but Light of Heaven actually not split pushing this time. He is in it, he hexed, and that's a GG. That means Poseidon will not win up against Virtus Pro. So new Virtus Pro triumphs over old Virtus Pro, and this one is Virtus Pro take their first win in Star Series, Star Ladder. And uh, 
Well, I have to say, it wasn't that convincing as I thought it might be at some point, but they st they still take it in a safe fight. That was their second, right? Their 2-1 now? They didn't win. Oh, oh yeah, they, they, oh, yeah, they, I, yeah. They won Monday or yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, I think, indeed. Tuesday, you're right. yeah. It's so the second win, you're right. But yeah, VP, they're still looking real shaky. They lost the match earlier, and, you know, now they're barely winning this game it was very close and it felt like they had a huge advantage at a couple points they just lost a couple big fights but yeah they end up winning hopefully they uh, start maybe getting into their groove a little bit it's still a new team it takes a little while to get the synergy going yeah oh, I am so annoyed with my with the stream <laughs> apparently entire tw twitch is uh, freaking out because Toby's stream dropped as well as other streams are lagging and wait a you know just everything going wrong for Twitch right now. Uh, but, um, yeah, thank you for bearing with, with us or for having uh, or watching inside the game. You can buy a ticket. You yeah, don't have to deal with shitty Twitch at the moment, so that would be cool if you uh, if you do do that. Support Starladder, of course, as well with that one. Uh, thank you for co-casting with me, Kunaz. It was enjoyable despite the Twitch lag. I mean, uh, it was a bit of a thing to deal with, but we managed and we made it through. Any shoutouts or plugins for you? Uh, no. Really, if uh, I guess I'll plug myself. My name's mm -hmm. Kanaz, and if you like my casting, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash Kanazda, or follow me on Twitter at KanazDota. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Okay, well then, thank you for watching. Of course, I'm going to play some commercials after the game is over, but I'm not going to be doing anything anymore apart from trying to fix things with Twitch. So stick around for watching commercials, and otherwise, have a good night, and... Uh... Be back tomorrow, because 1700 will be Starletter going live again. Let's take a quick look at what games we'll have tomorrow. We have Empire vs. Menace, Virtus Pro vs. Empire, Poseidon vs. Quantic, Dusa vs. Rocks. And those were the four games that were tomorrow. However, be aware that there might still be some changes as teams normally finalize their schedule only at the end of the day before the next day. Hopefully at some point Dota will be uh, scheduled a little bit more in advance than a day before, but who knows. Anyways, thank you for being here and thank you for being patient and uh, we're out.